Jobs versus Gates, Ford versus Ferrari, Musk versus Bezos. Great entrepreneurial rivalries drive human progress to new heights and provide a spectacle along the way. No rivalry provided more good for humanity than the legendary competition between two of history's most renowned inventors, Nikola Tesla and Thomas Edison. Today, we'll be exploring what drove these two men, catalog some of their greatest inventions, and try to understand who had the upper hand. They battled to light the city of New York. Enormous businesses and industries were created in the wake of their invention, but only one could translate it into a personal fortune. Let's get into it. Thomas Edison was an American businessman and inventor born in 1847. While he's best known for the development of the incandescent light bulb, he also created the phonograph, a magnetic iron ore separator, and alkaline storage battery. Edison might be the most prolific inventor in history, with over thousand patents to his name. He's also credited with the development of the motion picture camera, and the first commercial electric power plant. Edison was the engineering role model of his day. Henry Ford had a picture of Edison hanging on the wall of his office and was quoted as saying, Mr. Edison gave America just what was needed at that moment in history. They say that when people think of me, they think of my assembly line. Mr. Edison, you built an assembly line which brought together the genius of invention, science, and industry. Nikola Tesla was a Serbian inventor and electrical engineer who's best known for his contributions to the design of the modern electrical system. Born in 1856, Tesla actually went to Paris to work for the Continental Edison Company before emigrating to the United States. Mr. Edison. So what do you do, Mr. Tesla? I am an inventor. I can fix anything. Upon arrival, he quickly made a name for himself as a brilliant inventor and left the company to develop his own induction motor. While the motor revolutionized what was possible in household appliances, Tesla also transformed television with his Tesla coil and uncovered X-ray imaging technology, which eventually transformed the medical field. Kinda surprising that these two didn't get along. So you will not honor your word about the remuneration? What are you talking about? Well, you said $50,000. Are you unhappy with my contributions? I'm paying you $50,000? That was a joke. Despite their many similarities, Tesla and Edison were fierce competitors. One of the most famous examples of their rivalry was the competition over the superiority of AC versus DC electricity. Let's quickly explain the difference between alternating and direct current. AC, for alternating current, and DC, or direct current, are two forms of transferring electricity. The main difference between them is the direction in which electrons flow through a wire. In DC, the electrons flow in a single constant direction. In AC, on the other hand, the electrons change in direction periodically, flowing first in one direction and then back the other. This change in direction typically happens multiple times per second. At the time, Edison was a proponent of direct current electricity, which he believed was safer and a more practical option for powering homes and businesses. Tesla, on the other hand, believed that alternating current electricity was the way of the future and spent much of his career working to improve and promote its use. Imagine a central power station with one generator. What kind of generator? Alternating current. You can do the work of many DC generators and it's dangerous. You can't control it. It'll burn down the city. When it comes to commercial success, Edison's direct current power systems were initially more widely adopted. Edison promoted DC power systems in four ways. Edison conducted a series of public demonstrations to show the potential of direct current power. He used DC powered lights and motors to illustrate its benefits over alternating currents. And you have to remember, this was the late 1800s. There wasn't as much to do, as many distractions as we're privy to now. This was a show and people showed up. Let's say we unscrew the lid and see what happens. You ready? Three, two. Edison also invested heavily in marketing, staging stunts and paying off the press to curry public favor. He staged electrocutions of animals to show that AC was more dangerous, which helped to create a negative image of alternating current in the public's mind. 
Edison's third strategy focused on intellectual property. He held a large number of patents related to DC power systems and their related technologies. He used this IP to control the market and limit the spread of AC power systems. Throughout his life, he actually accrued 1,093 patents, the most ever. I made this video about the guy with the second most. Edison's last strategy was business partnerships. Because he had an existing company, he could send out salesmen and travel himself to build partnerships with the nation's manufacturers and other entrepreneurs who could stand to gain from the growth of DC power systems. These efforts helped to establish DC power as the preferred alternative to Tesla's AC power in the early years of the electrical industry. Edison's name also became synonymous with electric power generation and distribution. But the rivalry between Edison and Tesla came to a head in the late 1800s, when they both were working on contracts to electrify the city of New York. Gentlemen, good afternoon. No commutators. Two phases, one-fifth of a horsepower. I give you the future of electricity. Alternating current. After much deliberation, Tesla and his employer, Westinghouse Electric, won the bid. This marked a turning point in the electrical industry as AC systems began to gain widespread acceptance over their DC alternative. Westinghouse's AC-based power distribution system was more efficient and cost-effective, and the success of the New York project helped to establish AC power as the standard for electrical power transmission around the world. Both Tesla and Edison were incredibly talented inventors, but only one was a great entrepreneur. Edison's success was built on the back of his many patents and commercial ventures, including the formation of the Edison Electric Light Company in 1878. Tesla, meanwhile, didn't have his own company. In May of 1888, George Westinghouse, head of the Westinghouse Electric Company here in Pittsburgh, fought the patent rights to Tesla's polyphase system of alternating current dynamos, transformers, and motors. The deal was arranged as a royalty agreement in which Tesla would receive a payment for every AC generator Westinghouse sold. This arrangement provided Tesla with a steady source of income and allowed him to continue his work. He didn't want to build companies, he just wanted to keep inventing. It was Westinghouse who funded the power struggle with Edison, and when he eventually won out, reaped the majority of the rewards. Now let's get one thing straight. Tesla did not die penniless, you may have heard that. He did have assets to his name upon his death. But it is true that Tesla faced financial difficulties throughout much of his life, and at times struggled to get the funding he needed to continue his work. It was only after Tesla's death that the value of his patents and other intellectual property began to really increase as the importance of his contributions to science were recognized and the use of electricity proliferated across society. If your goal is to get wealthy, commercializing technology is actually a more valuable skill than being the one to invent it. Edison had this figured out. He also understood the importance of maintaining control of your IP and your company. This is a common theme with all the great entrepreneurs. Ford, Elon, George Lucas have all maintained control over their IP and their companies on the way to enormous wealth. The competition between Nikola Tesla and Thomas Edison was fascinating and an important part of human history. Both men were driven by a desire to change the world with their inventions, and their legacies continue to influence the field of electrical engineering and technology to this day. And the cool thing is, everyone benefited from the competition between their two firms. We need to continue to make room for entrepreneurs to compete so that we can all win. If you agree, let me know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, I guarantee you'll like the video we made about Steve Jobs and how he modeled his entrepreneurial career after the founder of Polaroid.